When I was in college, I was out and about with my then boyfriend. We had gone to dinner, then went to Walmart to get some typical college food so we could survive a Sunday in. I was dressed up in a casual, dressy outfit. We decided to split up while we shopped, perhaps to do quicker shopping, but I don't remember the exact reason why. I was wandering the grocery aisles when I noticed a girl who was about my age. In a friendly manner, we casually smiled at each other and continued shopping. It didn't seem weird at first, but I kept noticing her in the same aisles as me, and a big, muscular man was never far behind us. Eventually, I texted my boyfriend and asked where he was and continued shopping. Next thing I knew, the girl approached me and complimented my jacket. I said, thanks, Marisa's, and tried to move on. She stopped me and said something along the lines of, Hey, you look like you're my age and you seem really nice. I just moved here for a new job and a company my friends and I are starting. And tried to ask me questions about where I was from. I was vague and untrusting with what I said, noticing that this wasn't normal. Then she said, I'm looking for more people like you and me to work for our company. It's kind of a warehouse job and I would love you to be one of our bookkeepers. You should give me your number. I responded, uh, That's nice of you to offer me a job, but I'm not a desk person and I already have a job I really love. And she says, Ah, well that's a bummer. Well, I thought we might work well together, you know? Well, would you want to give me your number so we can at least hang out? I'd love to have a friend who can show me around the city. I realized that I wasn't getting out of the situation until my boyfriend showed up or I gave her my number. Eventually, I rattled off a fake number and said, Hey, I'll catch you later, I gotta go. Then I walked away, praying my boyfriend would be near so we could just get the heck out of there. While I was looking for him and trying to call him, the girl caught up to me and said, Hey, I tried to call you, but it said the number was out of service. As I tried to come up with a quick excuse and say, well, Maybe you typed it in wrong. She saw that my iPhone was unlocked and in my hand. She quickly snatched it and called herself on it. I was so flustered and mad at her that I snatched my phone right back when my boyfriend came around the corner. He instantly recognized that something was up and said that we needed to go. When the girl saw him approach me, she looked so disappointed to see him and stopped trying to interact. We ended up buying nothing and just leaving. And that night, we called our parents and the police. The police said they didn't think it was anything ill-intended, but... I was sure that it was probably trafficking, as that's something that's happened around that area before. I was going to switch my phone number because I was so scared. I blocked them and turned off all location access on my phone. I was too scared to go anywhere alone for a while, and I even told my coach so she was aware. A couple of days later, I got a text from a random number. It was the girl. She sent a picture of my best friend, who was out drinking downtown with some of her other friends. The text said, I met your best friend. She gave me your number because I told her I was looking for new friends. She showed me a picture of you and I said, What a coincidence, I met her the other day and lost her number when I got a new phone. Now about two minutes later I got a text from my best friend saying, I gave your number to a girl who wants to make friends around here and is looking for people to join her business. And since I'm moving this week I thought of you. I freaked out and told her to get away from the girl and not to leave alone with her. I stayed up all night, worried, until my best friend got home. She said she was fine, otherwise I would have gone to pick her up. Now the next day, my best friend apologized and told me to block the number. She said that the girl in her group had tried to ditch her, but she kept showing up at the bus that they were at. The girl was relentless and texted my friend all night, trying to get her to go hang out at her place. My best friend also said that when she asked about the business, the girl wouldn't give her many details other than it was a warehouse somewhere and that it would pay her great and it was in town. If she wanted a tour of it, the girl said that she would take her and she even said she would take her there tonight. We never heard from this chick again and today I was listening to a podcast that mentioned different trafficking tactics including vague jobs where they would pay you well but needed you to come meet with them for some more information and a new to town girl who desperately needs new friends things like that i've been thinking about this all morning and i'm glad i felt uncomfortable and that my friend didn't go with this girl but i am mostly mad that the cops ignored my concern and just thought it was nothing 
even though it's pretty clear trafficking has occurred in my area and in that Walmart specifically before. I just hope they wrote down the tip that I gave them that night, but I doubt they did. When I was seven years old, my mom and father got a divorce. This event prompted her to move and follow her career in a different small town which would pay better as she was a single parent now. On our long 12 hour drive to the new location, we stopped on the way in this little town which was very hippie, sorta of had lots of art and little shops everywhere. My mom said that we were here to meet up with her friend Paulette. I guess they went way back in her college days and recently got in touch after about a decade. We ended up going to this East Indian restaurant where we could meet for dinner. This slender, somewhat fragile woman walks in. She was very tall, well over six foot, big frizzy curly brown hair with blonde streaks in it. She was Caucasian, wearing a colorful shawl with feather earrings with very pale blue eyes. She looked like a mosaic tapestry or something. She walks over to the table and gives my mom a greeting and a big hug makes her way over to my older brother and shakes his hand, after comes around to my side of the table. I lend my hand out to her and she just stood there, expressionless, with her mouth partly open with a blank gaze, just staring at me. It briefly made me uncomfortable and then a flick of a switch, the spark ignites in her face and she makes this huge Cheshire cat smile, kneels over and hugs me tightly. She goes back to sit with my mom and then catches up over the years while we eat dinner. My mom got the bill and said to Paulette in the parking lot, you can just follow us. We got in the car and my mom explained to us that Paulette was actually coming over to live with us for a while. Paulette followed us for the next several hours. We got to the new place and unpacked our necessity items since we had hired a moving truck with the rest of our stuff arriving in the morning. There was a bunk bed already set up at this place for my brother and me. It was roughly 11 p.m. when we arrived and we quickly fell asleep. However, I woke up at around 1.30 a.m. to find the patio deck light on which was right beside our room. I gazed out through the blinds and saw the back of Paulette's curly hair. She was sitting on the deck cross-legged smoking a cigarette. I didn't think much of it and lay back down until I noticed the light from the window was partly blocked out. I looked behind me and saw the unmistakable outline of Paulette's shadow facing my window. She was there for a few minutes and I didn't want to lean up so I just pretended to sleep. Her shadow moved and I heard the front door close. The patio light turned off after a few minutes and I repositioned myself facing the wall to go back to sleep. As I began to drift off, the door to our room opened slowly but it wasn't my mom. It was Paulette wearing a nightgown. I turned back to face the wall and close my eyes. She quietly made her way to my bunk and started to comb the back of my hair with her fingers in a claw formation, running her nails on the back of my scalp. I kept my eyes closed tightly, nearly holding my breath, trying to give no sign that I was awake. I smelled some essential oils like lavender and she started rubbing oil into the back of my neck and pinching the back of my neck muscle, sometimes holding it and releasing it. I began to accept whatever was happening because it didn't feel all that bad after a while. I actually ended up falling asleep to it after my initial confusion. I woke up in the morning and Paulette was waiting at the table with cereal for my brother and me. She put chocolate chips in my bowl but not in my brother's and my brother and I made small talk with her and she seemed to be trying to make us comfortable with the new situation. My brother went back to his room and set up his GameCube after his cereal and since I was a slower eater than my older brother, I was always the last at the table. As I slowly ate, she sat there, watching my every move. Once I finished, I said, thank you, and grabbed my bowl to bring it to the sink. She placed her hand on mine and said, I gave you a neck massage so you wouldn't pee your bed. I know lots of young ones pee beds when they sleep in unfamiliar surroundings. I looked up at her and said, I've never peed the bed before, but thank you. She continued to massage the back of my neck for the next few nights. I ended up telling her that I was comfortable here now and that she didn't need to do this anymore. She reacted with a sigh but acknowledged it. 
I started elementary school the following week, which meant getting earlier night's sleep at around 8pm. Paulette and my mom would stay up much later than my brother and me and drink wine. I used to wait for everyone to go to bed before using the washroom at night to pee because my mom would scold me for being up late on weeknights. Once the house got quiet at around 11pm, I would sneak out and tiptoe to the washroom. This became my routine for the next few weeks until Paulette started doing the same thing at the same time every night. Every time I opened the door, she would blaze down the hallway across from my room. It happened so frequently that I started going outside to pee from the back mudroom. She began to make me very livid. I would open my door as quietly as I could and then sprint to the washroom. This seemed to work for a while until one night when I got up slightly later than usual and around midnight, I was a little more careless with noise because I was half asleep and groggy. I opened the door, and Paulette's door slammed open instantly. She barged out into the dimly moonlit hallway completely naked, and quickly walked down the hallway. I was already so far down the hallway that I couldn't turn back to my room. I jumped behind my mom's jade plant, squished my knees to my chest, and tucked my head down. She whizzed straight by me so fast that I felt the wind push my hair. She stayed in the washroom for almost an hour with the door open to crack and lights off in silence. I stayed there beside the washroom tucked in the corner behind the plant pot not making a sound. I heard the washroom door open completely and she started pacing up and down the hallway. I kept small and insignificant behind the plant until she went back into her room. I brushed this off as a complete accident, it was just unfortunate timing, but no. Every night going forward, she would literally sprint down the hallway naked if I made a single noise, creak the floorboard, or open my door. About two months into this, my brother and I were sword fighting with tree branches outside. He ended up clipping my forehead, causing it to bleed pretty badly. Paulette saw this happen and walked up to my brother. I thought she would scold him, but instead, she stomped and kicked him in the head with her boot, causing him to fall on his back. He got up off the ground crying and ran into the house. She grabbed me and started cradling me, rocking me back and forth like a baby. She was shaking so much that she was vibrating and repeatedly asking, Are you hurt? Are you hurt? in a shaky voice. Anyway, my mom found out through my brother what happened and decided that she had to leave. And on her final day, Paulette made a point to see me one more time in the driveway before entering her car. She knelt down and said, I hope I can see you in a different life. You remind me so much of my husband. Goodbye. And started bawling her eyes out, hugging me. I asked my mom who her husband was and I guess he was some marine who had died in Afghanistan a few months prior to her moving in with us. My mom said that she would frequently say how much I reminded her of him on a daily basis. My mom hasn't spoken to her since. To this day, I had never told my mom about the massages or anything else because Paulette was already exiled, and I felt that it would just cause more drama. Several years ago, I walked a handful of blocks up the street from my partner's house to a convenience store to buy something to drink. It was about 11pm and I was trying to slide in there before the store closed. To set the scene, we lived in a transitory neighborhood that was chock full of abandoned houses and crime, with a few occupied residents and businesses scattered about. There were zero streetlights or illumination. Envision a more compact version of a type of Detroit neighborhood exemplified in the movie Barbarian and you won't be far off the mark. Looking back, the nighttime excursions to the store from my place to his were absolutely idiotic on my part, but after living in that environment for years, you just become accustomed to it. Anyways, it was one of my many full-heartedly nighttime store trips. My partner by then would ask me not to do it, but I just ignored that. I wanted my drink. It was very dumb of me. I got the few blocks up the streets in the usual darkness, got my drink, and left the store to head back. Outside the store, a guy was standing near the trash can hassling everyone who came out, asking for money and cigarettes, etc. I told him I didn't have anything and started to cross the parking lot and head back, but this guy sprang after me like a freaking rabbit and grabbed a hold of my arm. 
He starts aggressively demanding that I go to a party with him and tries to steer me down the pitch black side street just beside the convenience store. He was probably six foot seven, crazy tall and super thin with the dreads all over his face making it hard to see what he even looked like. His fingers bit into my arm and felt like they pinched a nerve. My heart starts pounding like crazy right away. I was used to brushing off this type of behavior, having lived in the neighborhood for several years by then, but this was way more aggressive than anything I'd faced so far. I shook my arm out of his grasp, told him that I was heading to my boyfriend's place and it was only a few blocks down the street. He was waiting for me, said sorry in an attempt to placate him, and took off speed walking down the street at the top speed. He called after me several times and then I heard his quick footsteps as he decided to follow me down the street. By then I could feel my heartbeat in my eyeballs. My mouth had gone cotton dry and I was almost hyperventilating with fear, trying to stay quiet so this idiot wouldn't hear me. I had this feeling that to show fear to look back at him would cause him to react violently right away so I just put on a burst of speed and tried to outwalk him. However, my five five legs were no match for his crazy long stride and I could hear little pieces of rock and concrete crunching under his feet as he closed in on me. I literally felt like my heart would leap out of my chest or explode from fear. I tried to walk even faster but I could hear the guy right behind me. I could hear his breath in my ear and got this overwhelming feeling that he was going to grab me at any second maybe with a weapon, and try to force me to walk wherever he wanted me to. The neighborhood is pitch black, and there's no real through traffic, not at night. If he wanted to force me to go with him, I'd be powerless, save for trying to run for him, but with his height advantage, I knew that he'd catch me fast. Then I could finally see my boyfriend's driveway, and him standing at the end of it, waiting for me. He had a terrible feeling, and already worried constantly about me walking at night so he'd come outside to wait for me. I saw that he had his crowbar in one hand, his usual defense weapon, kept near the front door, and then my nerve broke and I started sprinting toward him, and the tall dude behind me started to run after me. I reached the place where my boyfriend stood and squeaked out help or something like that dove behind him and cowered waiting for the tall dude to pull a gun or shoot us both or start struggling with my boyfriend. It didn't happen. He gets right up to my boyfriend's face, standing way too close to him and asks for a light. My boyfriend gives him one, holding the crowbar aloft in the other hand so that it was very visible. Then I grab a hold of him and yank him into the house, locking the door and absolutely losing it sobbing and freaking out while trying to choke out what had even happened. My boyfriend goes looking from the windows and sees him kind of standing around and then leaving. He saw him here and there for a few months afterwards, up at the store or walking up and down the street. Unsurprisingly, I'm sure, I never took another nighttime walk. I still sometimes have nightmares, thinking about him chasing me in the night. When I was in my early 20s, I went to Walmart for a grocery haul. I walk in, get me some McDonald's before I go shopping, because we all know you can't go grocery shopping hungry. I smash my two McChickens, then go about shopping. Fifteen or so minutes later, I got what was coming to me. Some intolerable stomach pains and a bathroom trip brewing. So I run to the bathroom in a panic, close the stall, and let the storm begin. There's just one other person in the bathroom with me in the stall to the left, the handicap stall. By the shoes, I'm thinking it's a little girl, so as I'm going about my business, looking down at my phone to pass the time, all of a sudden I see something in the upper corner of my eye. It was a phone on the top of the stall door in front of me, not the handicap stall, with the camera facing me. There was a hand holding the phone. There was someone recording me using the bathroom. The whole thing went by so quickly but I was in an incredibly vulnerable position as you can imagine and all I could think to do was scream what the F are you doing as loud as possible. The person immediately runs off and I hear the little girl in the stall beside me jump up off the toilet and run away. 
By the time I could wipe myself and run out of the bathrooms, obviously whoever was recording me was gone. So I'm completely mortified, and I ask for one of the managers and I tell them what happened. They were not concerned that someone was straight up recording me in the bathroom with my pants down and legs wide open for God knows how long. I tell them to please look at the cameras because I feel completely violated and am concerned for my safety. Within 10 minutes, they return and say that a little girl ran out of the bathroom shortly before me and that it was probably her just joking around getting pictures of people in the restroom. I argued with them and said I know it wasn't that little girl because she was in the stall next to me and she ran out after I yelled. They were adamant that that's who it was because no one else went in before or after me. I never escalated it further with the Walmart manager. Looking back, I was gaslighted into thinking it was just some dumb kid. But the next few days when I thought about it, that's just not possible. I came to the conclusion that there is a nasty poop-peeping pervert hiding in the supply closet or something in the bathrooms, taking videos of vulnerable women doing their business. I've been convinced all of these years that I am probably out there on some website on the dark web somewhere for people who have these types of weird things that they're into. And not long before that particular incident, I was followed by a car out of Walmart and nearly made it to my house before I realized. I drove around to make sure it was actually following me and they definitely were. I got rid of them because I drove to a gas station and screamed, this person is following me, please call the police. And once they heard what I was doing, they drove away. I never got a good look at him or her, unfortunately, and I never did file a police report either. I can't help but wonder if it was the same person that took a video of me in that bathroom. About an hour ago, my manager and I were closing shift at a store in my small town in the north, off the main road and across rent-controlled apartments. I was waiting at the register as usual and watching people come in around 10 minutes before close watching who came in so that I could make sure that they all left. There was a guy that came in after a girl that I randomly hyperfixated on and he walked down the main aisle towards the bathrooms and went out of sight. I don't know why, but I wanted to make sure that he specifically left. Customer after customer came and went, the ones that I saw come in. But five minutes to closing time, that guy never left. My manager went to the bathroom and I stayed by the register until she came out and went to the office. I walked around the first few aisles in the front towards the door and didn't see him. My manager came out and wanted to buy some things right before we were supposed to close. I told her that I saw a guy come in but I didn't see him leave. I felt really uncomfortable and disturbed and thought that it was just because I'd been listening to the insanely creepy podcast The Black Tapes. But after she checked the whole store and then I went around and checked with her, we saw that he'd left a basket. We went into the office after I grabbed my stuff and we checked the cameras several times. We saw him come in, we watched the cameras again, forwards and backwards, every camera, outside and inside, right by the exit and incoming door. He never left. We decided to leave after about half an hour and called our general manager. I never saw him leave and the cameras never recorded him leaving, and I've been terrified since it just happened. Shadow, my 115 pound German Shepherd, black lab mix, started to signal that she had to use the bathroom at about 1 to 1.15 a.m. Annoyed because I was about to sleep, I got up, put a hoodie on, and took her out with nothing but my phone for the flashlight. She started to do the usual sniff for 15 minutes just to go in the regular spot routine. I had my flashlight on her because she is camouflaged by the night, and I'd like to know where she's at so she doesn't run off. Just as she's starting to use the bathroom, I turn away and notice someone. They're standing at the very edge of my yard. Looking back at my dog, I noticed that she wasn't paying attention to the person yet, so I called her to me and attached her leash. The person just stood there and watched me. I called out to them and said, Hey, you need to leave my yard. To which I only received silence back. I cleared my throat and repeated myself, 
eventually attempting a third time just to change it to, Hey, don't make me tell you again. You're going to be leaving this yard. Just as my partner was coming outside to see what all the commotion was, they took a few steps forward, clearly intending to continue towards me, caught a glimpse of my partner, backpedaled and turned around and left. As confused as he was, I was in complete shock. We've had to run this one person off our property because they would bring their dog over to use the bathroom in our yard, but I don't think it was them. I've seen their face and I really don't think it was them. They haven't been back, but right before that we did find footprints near our shed and windows of our home. I'm genuinely unnerved and contacted the police and they didn't do anything other than take a statement. I've been told it'll go nowhere until physical harm or potentially a break-in happens. Click the join button to become a member today for exclusive content. So this was a few years back and I was walking home from a friend's house after hanging at hers after school. It was around 9.30pm in the summer so the sun had for the most part set. It was relatively dark but still bright enough where I could make out things that were around me. I was stoned and walking very slowly down the road to my house which was only about a 20 minute walk away from my friends. The majority of my walk was spent on a straight, quiet, suburban street that was very familiar to me as I had done this walk plenty of times before. After maybe five minutes of walking, I noticed the first and only car to drive past. It was an old, beat-up white Honda, which I didn't take notice much of until another few minutes passed and it drove by again. Still, I wasn't concerned and continued about my walk, admiring the cracks in the pavement or doing whatever else a stone 14-year-old does on a walk. Another minute passes and this car drives past again, this time more slowly and I feel my stomach drop. I couldn't make out who was inside, but I knew something was off. I've always been very timid, so I tried to convince myself it was just paranoia and that I was just being dramatic, until it drives past again about two minutes later and parked maybe 10 feet in front of me. As I approached the car, I kept my head down, but I hear a, hey there. And sure enough, I look up and there was a rough looking man, who you could just tell from his appearance alone that he smelt like stale cigarettes and body odor, sitting in the driver's seat smiling at me. The lack of teeth and dirty shirt this man had gave me a horrible vibe, so I just gave a little smile back and continued walking. I looked up and noticed that he's driving alongside me and he asked if I had directions to the closest gas station. I stopped and pointed in the general direction and told him where to go and that it was less than a five minute drive away, when out of nowhere he just started to laugh. I kind of just stared in confusion and fear as he squinted his eyes at me like he was trying to get a better look at my face and then he said, I'll take a guess but I think I can tell from those eyes that you've been smoking pot, little miss. I kind of just laughed and tried to walk away when he said, Come back. So I stopped in my tracks. Why I just didn't keep walking is beyond me, but I turned around and he pulls out a rather large bag of weed and asks if I want some. I tell him I'm okay and I have no money and he said something along the lines of, I don't need your money take it. I reassure him I'm fine and don't need it and try to continue walking, but nonetheless, he continued driving alongside me. He then asked if I need a ride home and tells me it's too dark to be walking alone, which really frightened me. He continued trying to coerce me into his car and I become more and more unsettled. I begin to look for the closest house with a light on and after finding one I tell him, oh, this is my house, good night and walk up some stranger's driveway and walk straight into their home. There was a middle-aged couple sitting in the living room and they looked extremely shocked and equally angry and I just started to sob out of shock and relief and apologize profusely. I explained to them what just happened and the very kind lady assured me that I did the right thing and she gave me a ride home. Looking back, I probably should have not, but I was scared, under the influence and still a child, and the homeowners were very understanding. 
Still one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me, but I'm so glad that I trusted my gut and got away from that man whose intentions seemed anything but pure. I still consider myself lucky that I got away. A couple of days ago, I was walking my dog around the lake at my condominium like I always do. It was around 6.30pm and the sky was getting a little bit dark. My dog is a golden retriever and she is very friendly with people and other dogs. She's six months old and she rarely barks or growls at anybody. She actually loves being pet by strangers but she is usually very calm regardless if people pet her or not. Anyways, we were walking and suddenly... I turned around and I saw this guy coming out of nowhere. The guy looked old, he had glasses, and he walked nervously. He was still far away from us, so I don't think he was nervous about my dog. As he got closer to us, I just stopped and moved to the side like I usually do when there is somebody coming from behind us. I do this so they can walk ahead of us, and my dog stops constantly looking back, moving its tail, looking forward to being pet. But instead, my dog just starts getting restless and starts growling nervously while looking at the guy. I tried to calm her down and I smiled at the guy trying to be friendly but the guy just looked at me with a serious face and started reaching for something out of his backpack. At this point, my dog just starts barking and I just get this bad feeling and a shiver down my spine. For a second I thought, what if the guy had a weapon or something? The guy just kept walking looking at me while reaching for his backpack as my dog kept barking at him. I apologized for my dog's behavior and tried to tell him that my dog usually doesn't behave like that, but the guy just seemed to ignore me. Finally, he just passes us and my dog stops barking, but she's still very agitated. I just sat down next to her trying to calm her down while the guy just got lost between some of the houses instead of just walking the lake path, which seemed kind of weird to me. Maybe I was just being paranoid. Maybe the guy just didn't like dogs, which is fine. I try to be really respectful to people who don't like dogs. After he got lost from our sight, my dog just went back to her usual friendly self, and we were able to finish our walk, but something felt really weird about the guy, and the encounter made me incredibly uncomfortable. On Saturday morning, I, a 21-year-old female, decided to go to my local Goodwill. I am disabled and suffer from chronic pain. I use a cane on my good days and a wheelchair on bad days. Luckily for me, this was a good day. I parked out front and got out of my car and immediately noticed a man sitting at the far corner in front of the Goodwill. As I was walking into the Goodwill, he shouted, Miss, do you have any extra time for me today? I'd never seen this man in my life and really did not want to engage with him, so I politely said, No sir, not today, I'm sorry, and continued walking. He shouted something else at me, but I couldn't make out what he said and was afraid if I stopped and asked, then he would try to engage me in a conversation. I ignored him and continued walking. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him begin to stand up. I walked faster and entered the goodwill. Thinking I was in the clear, I began walking along the front of the store, just looking at the items. My heart dropped when I glanced through the front window and saw him walking briskly towards the entrance. I immediately thought that he might be following me. This has happened to me before at Goodwills. Every time, I've wound up in uncomfortable situations and conversations where I have to continuously decline the advances of men I am really not interested in. It's gotten to the point where I wear a fake ring when I go out so I can say I'm married because sometimes they accept that answer better than me simply not being interested, I guess. In that moment, the disability left my body because I picked up my cane and booked it to the nearby rack of ball gowns and hid behind them. Through the gaps, I observed him storming into the store and start to look through the aisles. I was scared because he looked angry, maybe because I ignored him. I didn't mean to be rude, I thought that I had made it clear in a polite way that I didn't want to speak with him. I don't think it's wrong of me to want to go thrifting without having to engage with random men. A kind woman nearby came up to the ball gowns where I was hiding and pretended to inspect them, and she whispered, Are you okay? And I responded, I think the man in the blue is looking for me. 
She said that she thought so as well, and I asked her if any of the nearby dressing rooms were open. She pointed to the one that was, and when I saw that the man had his back turned, I dived underneath the door and locked it behind me. I called my boyfriend from the dressing room in tears and asked him to come to the store, and soon I heard a knock at the door. The kind woman had gotten the manager. She told me that after the man looked through all the aisles, he walked out, grabbed his bag, and left the area. They closed the dressing room that I was in and let me hide in it until my boyfriend arrived. Then one of the male employees and my boyfriend walked me to my car. That was the end of it. Nothing really dramatic happened, and since we were in public, I don't think my life was in danger, but it was an unsettling experience. I hate to think of the possible confrontation we might have had if he'd found me. I'm just so thankful to the Goodwill employees and the kind woman who helped me that day. This incident took place in 2011, a year after my graduation from college. I was a 22-year-old female living in my first apartment with a friend. I had adopted the sweetest dog I had ever had, a runt of the litter, Pomeranian, who loved every person she ever met. My nephew was young at the time and would sometimes handle her a little roughly. We'd correct him, but he didn't quite realize how little she was under all that fur, and she tolerated it without ever nipping or anything. One day, my roommate was gone and there was a knock at the door. It was a handyman who said he was there for an annual check on appliances. He was wearing the apartment complex's standard uniform and had a badge, so I really didn't think twice about it. And upon follow-up, he really did work there, even though I hadn't been notified that this would be happening. He came and began chatting and sort of leering. I felt uncomfortable, but not nearly as freaked out when my dog came rushing in between us, ears back, teeth bared, and started growling at him. He awkwardly laughed and went to pet her, weird choice for a dog that's baring its teeth at you, and she immediately lunged forward like she was going to bite him. He leaped back before she could. Now despite being a tiny dog and him a large man, he was obviously freaked out. At this point, she was straight up barking at him. He asked if I could put her away while he worked, and I lied and said that she had separation anxiety. I recommended that he come back another time when I could walk her or when my roommate was there so one of us could be in the room with her. And he never did come back. My dog lived another seven years and not once did she ever growl at another human, let alone try to bite one. You hear about dogs being able to read people so while I don't know if he would have done anything to me while on company hours, I still think that she could sense that he wasn't a good person. She was my good girl. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. If you get a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit r slash let's read official or send me one over email and you might even hear your story featured on the next video and if you want to support me even more grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on patreon or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel and check out the let's read podcast where you can hear all of these stories and big compilations and save huge on data located anywhere you listen to podcasts links in the description below Thanks so much, friends. And remember, I'm not naked. I'm wearing a smile on my face.